السلام علیکم بیٹا جی سر لاسٹ ٹائم ہم نے سلائڈس جو ہیں یہ ڈسکس کر لی تھیں ٹھیک ہے اور اب یہ ہے کہ ہم مول سے ریلیٹڈ جو کوشچنس پیپر میں آتے ہیں وہ آج ڈسکس کریں گے ٹھیک ہے تو چلیں یہ پاس پیپرس میں سے کچھ کوشچنس ہیں جو ہم ڈسکس کریں گے کہ بیسکلی اکٹوبر نومبر ٹوینٹی ٹو اکٹوبر نومبر ٹوینٹی ٹو پیپر ٹوینٹی ٹو ہے کوشچن نمبر نائن پارٹ اے میگنیشیم کاربونیٹ ریئیکٹس ود میگنیشیم کاربونیٹ ریئیکٹس ود ڈائلیوٹ ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ میگنیشیم کاربونیٹ اور ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ کا ریئیکشن ہے وین ٹوینٹی فائیو سی ایم کیوب ٹھیک ہے والیوم گیون ہے کس کا آف ڈائلیوٹ ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ سو والیوم گیون ہے ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ کا وین ٹوینٹی فائیو سی ایم کیوب آف ڈائلیوٹ ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ از ایڈیڈ ٹو ایکسز میگنیشیم کاربونیٹ نا اف سم تھنگ از این ایکسس دیٹ مینس کہ اس کا ریئیکشن کی کیلکولیشنس میں کوئی رول نہیں ہوگا اف اف اینی تھنگ از این ایکسس تو اس کا مطلب یہ دس ول ناٹ ڈسائڈ کہ جی کتنا اماؤنٹ پروڈکٹ کا بنے گا ٹھیک ہے تو دی والیوم آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ گیس پروڈیوسڈ اب کیا بن رہی ہے کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ گیس بن رہی ہے ایٹ روم ٹمپریچر اینڈ پریشر از ون ٹوینٹی تو گیس کتنی بن رہی ہے ون ٹوینٹی سینٹی میٹر کیوب کیلکولیٹ دی کنسنٹریشن ان مولس پر ڈی این کیوب آف ڈائلیوٹ ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ تو آپ کو ایچ سی ایل کی کانسنٹریشن فائنڈ آؤٹ کرنی ہے اور ایچ سی ایل کا والیوم گیون ہے وچ از ٹوینٹی فائیو سی ایم کیو تو اب وی نو دس تھنگ کہ کنسنٹریشن از ایکولس ٹو نمبر آف مولس اپون والیوم ٹھیک ہے کنسنٹریشن ان مولس پر ڈی ایم کیو کیلکولیٹ کرنی ہے نا آپ نے کنسنٹریشن ان مولس پر ڈی ایم کیو تو دیٹ مینس کہ ہم مولس کو ڈیوائڈ کریں گے والیوم سے تو اب والیوم تو گیون ہے آلریڈی ٹوینٹی فائیو سی ایم کیو بٹ یہاں پہ مولس جو ہیں یہ گیون نہیں ہے سو دیٹ مینس فرسٹ ہمیں مولس فائنڈ آؤٹ کرنے ہوں گے اب اس ٹائپ کی جو کیلکولیشنس ہوتی ہیں یہ کہلاتی ہیں اسٹوئچومیٹرک کیلکولیشنس جس میں آپ کو ایک سبسٹینس کا اماؤنٹ گیون ہے کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ کا والیوم گیون ہے دس از والیوم آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ تو وی ووڈ یوز دس والیوم آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ٹو فائنڈ آؤٹ دی مولس آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ٹھیک ہے ان دا فرسٹ اسٹیپ آپ جو چیز گیون ہے اس کو مولس میں کنورٹ کریں گے ٹھیک ہے تو پہلا اسٹیپ کیا ہو جائے گا اسٹیپ ون سو فرسٹ وی وڈ کیلکولیٹ دی والیوم آف مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ اور اگر گیس کا والیوم گیون ہے تو جیسے لاسٹ ٹائم ہم نے سلائڈس میں ڈسکس کیا تھا کہ وی کین کیلکولیٹ دی مولز آف گیس اف وی ہیو والیوم تو والیوم کتنا ہے ون ٹوینٹی سینٹی میٹر کیوب سو مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ وڈ بی ایکول ٹو والیوم آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ which is in centimeter cube divided by 24 اگر ڈی ایم کیوب میں ہوتا تو ہم 24 ڈی ایم کیوب لیتے بٹ بیکاز ہمیں سینٹیمیٹر کیوب میں دیا گیا ہے تو ہم ڈی ایم کیوب کو بیکاز وی نو دس تھنگ کہ ون مول آف اینی گیس ایٹ آر ٹی پی ٹوینٹی فور ڈی ایم کیوب اسپیس آکیوپائی کرے گا اور اگر اس کو سینٹیمیٹر کیوب میں کنورٹ کریں تو دیٹ از ایکولس ٹو ٹوینٹی فور تھاؤزینڈ سینٹیمیٹر کیوب بیکاز ون ڈی ایم کیوب از ایکول ٹو تھاؤزینڈ سینٹی میٹر کیوب سو ٹوینٹی فور تھاؤزینڈ سینٹی میٹر کیوب سو والیوم کتنا ہے والیوم ون ٹوینٹی ٹھیک ہے جی سو دیٹ وڈ بی ون ٹوینٹی ڈیوائڈیڈ بائی ٹوینٹی فور تھاؤزینڈ سو ون ٹوینٹی ڈیوائڈیڈ بائی ٹوینٹی فور تھاؤزینڈ دیٹ از ایکولس ٹو فائیو انٹو ٹین ریز ٹو پاور مائنس تھری تو یہ کیا گیا مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ٹھیک ہے یہ مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ آ گیا نیکسٹ بی وڈ کنورٹ مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ اب اسٹوکیومیٹری انوالو ہوگی کہ وی وڈ کنورٹ مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ ان ٹو آپ کو کس کی کنسنٹریشن فائنڈ آؤٹ کرنی ہے ایسڈ کی ٹھیک ہے ایسڈ کی کنسنٹریشن فائنڈ آؤٹ کرنی ہے تو مولز آف سی او ٹو کو ایسڈ کے مولز میں کنورٹ کریں گے اینڈ فار دیٹ وی نیڈ مولر ریشوز ٹھیک ہے تو اگر آپ یہاں پہ دیکھیں تو ایکویشن میں سی او ٹو کے اور ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ کے مولز کا ریشو کیا ہے وی ہیو ٹو مولز آف ایچ سی ایل وچ گیوز ون مول آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ تو ایچ سی ایل کا اور کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ کا اسٹیپ ٹو وی وڈ کیلکولیٹ دی مولز آف ایچ سی ایل فرام مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ فرام مولز آف کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ اور مولز آف ایچ سی ایل کا ایکویشن کے اکارڈنگلی ریشو کیا ہے ٹو ون مول آف سی او ٹو پروڈیوس فرام ٹو مولز آف ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ ٹھیک ہے جی تو کاربن ڈائی آکسائڈ اور ایچ سی ایل کا ریشو کیا ہو گیا ون ٹو کا ریشو ہے دیٹ مینس سی او ٹو کے جتنے بھی مولز ہیں ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ کے مولز اس کے ڈبل ہوں گے سو اف وی ہیو فائیو انٹو ٹین ریز ٹو پاور مائنس تھری مولز آف سی او ٹو سو ایچ سی ایل کے مولز اس کے ڈبل ہو جائیں گے دیٹ وڈ بی ایکول ٹو زیرو پوائنٹ زیرو ون مولز تو یہ ہائیڈرو کلورک ایسڈ کے مولز آ
concentration is equals to number of moles upon volume number of moles 0 0.01 divided by volume 25 centimeter cube hai isko dm cube mein convert karenge 25 divided by 1000 because concentration jo hai ye aapko dm cube mein required hai so either hum yahi pe isko divide kar dein divided by 1000 so that would be 0.025 ठीक है जी तो 0.025 तो 0.01 डिवाइडेड बाय 0.025 दैट इज इक्वल्स टू 0.4 सो कंसंट्रेशन ऑफ हाइड्रोक्लोरिक एसिड इज 0.4 मोल्स पर डीएम अच्छा जी अब ये नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन जो है ये एम्पेरिकल फार्मूला से कनेक्टेड है सेम ईयर है अल्कीन्स रिएक्ट विद क्लोरीन दिस इज क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 पार्ट ई अल्कीन्स रिएक्ट विद क्लोरीन इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ यूवी लाइट to form compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen and chlorine. ठीक है तो जो भी compound बन रहा है it contains carbon, hydrogen and chlorine. A compound कंटेन 37.8% carbon, 6.3% hydrogen and 55.9% chlorine by mass. Calculate the empirical formula of this compound. एंड फिफ्टी फाइव पॉइंट नाइन परसेंट कैलकुलेट द इम्पेरिकल फार्मूला ऑफ दिस कंपाउंड एम्पेरिकल फार्मूला कैलकुलेट करना है तो अब इम्पेरिकल फार्मूला क्या था सिंपलेस्ट फार्मूला तो एम्पेरिकल फॉर्मूला आपने जब भी कैलकुलेट करना है आप सिंपल ये देखेंगे कि कितने एलिमेंट्स हैं कार्बन हाइड्रोजन क्लोरीन तीन कॉलम्स बना लेंगे कार्बन हाइड्रोजन क्लोरीन ठीक है फर्स्ट वील कैलकुलेट देयर मोल्स ठीक है और मोल्स के लिए जो भी परसेंटेज गिवन है इसको एटॉमिक मासेस से डिवाइड कर देंगे फॉर एग्जाम्पल थर्टी डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेल्व 6.30 divided by 1, 55.9 divided by 35.5. ये atomic masses आप periodic table से देख लेंगे ठीक है जी So this would be equal to 3.15, 6.30, 1.57. अच्छा जी अब उसके बाद जो सबसे smallest value है which is 1.57. तो आपने सारी वैल्यूज को 1.57 से डिवाइड कर देना दिस इज दी स्मॉलेस्ट वैल्यू तो सिंपलेस्ट रेशो निकालने के लिए बाकी तमाम वैल्यूज को इससे डिवाइड कर देंगे तो 3.15 डिवाइडेड बाय 1.57 1.57 1.57 ठीक है तो दिस वुड गिव अस दी सिंपलेस्ट रेशो सो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू 1 6.30 डिवाइडेड बाय 1.57 इज इक्वल टू 4 And 3.15 divided by 1.57 is equals to 2. So empirical formula is carbon 2, hydrogen 4, Cl 1, C2H4, Cl. This is the empirical formula. अच्छा जी. Now this next question is from summer 22, paper 22. ठीक है जी और ये क्वेश्चन नंबर टू का पार्ट एफ है कैलकुलेट द वॉल्यूम इन डीएम क्यूब ऑफ 30.2 ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन ठीक है ऑक्सीजन क्या है गैस है ऑक्सीजन का वॉल्यूम भी कैलकुलेट करना है ठीक है कैलकुलेट द वॉल्यूम ऑफ वॉल्यूम इन डीएम क्यूब ऑफ 30.2 पॉइंट टू ग्राम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन तो मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गिवन है एट आर टी पी तो इसका मतलब वही ट्वेंटी फोर डी एम क्यूब वाला फॉर्मूला लगेगा गिव यूर आंसर टू टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स जैसे मैंने आपसे लास्ट टाइम भी कहा था कि जहाँ मैंशन नहीं है तो वहाँ आप टू टू फोर सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स पर आंसर दे सकते हैं बट यहाँ पर मैंशन है कि आंसर टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स पर होना चाहिए तो वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट दी वॉल्यूम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस जिसका फॉर्मूला है ओ टू ऑक्सीजन डायटॉमिक है और मास गिवन है ठीक है तो सबसे पहले आप क्या करेंगे स्टेप वन मास गिवन है मास को कन्वर्ट करेंगे इनटू मोल्स तो मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन को मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन में कन्वर्ट करने के लिए मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस इज इक्वल्स टू मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन डिवाइडेड बाय मोलर मास ठीक है जी डिवाइडेड बाय मोलर मास सो मास ऑफ ऑक्सीजन कितना गिवन है 30.2 पॉइंट टू डिवाइडेड बाय ऑक्सीजन का अटोमिक मास है 16 ये आप प्रियोडिक टेबल से देखेंगे और क्योंकि O2 है तो 16 मल्टीप्लाई बाई टू थर्टी टू थर्टी पॉइंट टू डिवाइडेड बाई थर्टी टू यहाँ से मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन आ जाएंगे 30.2 पॉइंट टू डिवाइडेड बाई थर्टी टू विच इज़ इक्वल्स टू जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फोर थ्री सेवन फाइव जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फोर थ्री सेवन फाइव नीज आर मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस 
नेक्स्ट मोल्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस आ गए अब आपने इसको कन्वर्ट करना है इन टू वॉल्यूम ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस एंड फॉर गैसेज वी यूज फॉर्मूला ये स्टेप वन था सो फॉर गैसेज आप डायरेक्ट मोल्स को वॉल्यूम में या वॉल्यूम को मोल्स में कन्वर्ट कर सकते हैं बाई यूजिंग मोल्स ऑफ गैस इज इक्वल्स टू वॉल्यूम ऑफ गैस डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी फोर डी एम क्यूब विच इज़ दॉल्यूम ऑफ वन मोल ऑफ गैस तो मोल्स ऑफ गैस कितने हैं जीरो पॉइंट नाइन फोर थ्री सेवन फाइव वॉल्यूम फाइंड आउट करना है डी एम क्यूब डिवाइडेड बाई ट्वेंटी फोर तो ये दिन मल्टीप्लाई होगा मल्टीप्लाई बाय ट्वेंटी फोर सो द आंसर इज ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव और क्योंकि हमें ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट सिक्स फाइव बट वी हैव टू गिव द आंसर इन टू सिग्निफिकेंट फिगर्स सो राउंड ऑफ करेंगे तो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी थ्री डेसीमीटर क्यूब सो दिस इज द वॉल्यूम ऑफ थर्टी पॉइंट टू ग्राम्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन गैस पहले आपने मोल्स कैलकुलेट किए ठीक है इस टाइप की कैलकुलेशन में हमेशा आपने क्या करना है जो भी चीज़ गिवन है पहले उसको मोल्स में कन्वर्ट करना है देन मोल्स को आपने वॉल्यूम uh, में कन्वर्ट कर दिया और मोल्स और वॉल्यूम ऑफ गैस का रिलेशन आपने ध्यान में रखना है दिस इज दॉर्मूला फॉर मोल्स ऑफ गैस एंड वॉल्यूम ऑफ गैस एंड दिस इज फॉर्मूला फॉर मोल्स एंड मास जी बेटा नाउ दिस क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द सेम पेपर समर ट्वेंटी टू पेपर ट्वेंटी टू एंड दिस इज क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्स पार्ट सी द क्वेश्चन से इज दैट द एक्वस एलुमिनम सल्फेट फॉर्म इज क्रिस्टलाइज Uh, to make hydrated aluminum sulfate, right? So this is the formula of hydrated aluminum sulfate. The relative formula mass of hydrated aluminum sulfate is six hundred sixty-six. So this is the relative formula mass, relative formula mass of hydrated aluminum sulfate, right? Calculate the value of x. in the formula of hydrated aluminum sulfate so we have to calculate the value of x in hydrated aluminum sulfate so this is fairly simple one all we have to do is just simply add up the atomic masses of the elements and we will find out the value of x so the atomic mass of aluminum is 27 27 multiply by 2 because there are two atoms of aluminum plus sulfur 32 sulfur 32 oxygen 16 right so sulfur 32 plus oxygen 16 and there are four oxygen atoms multiply by 4 and this whole would be multiplied by 3 right so this is the atomic mass of aluminum this is the atomic mass of uh, molar masses of uh, sulfate plus x moles of water now water the molecular mass of water is h2o hydrogen 1 multiplied by 2 plus 16 so this is 18 so 18 x this all is equals to 666 theek hai ji and finally ab aapne just simple x ki value find out karni hai so the value of x would be 27 multiply by 2 which would be equal to 54 54 plus 16 into 4 64 plus 32 96 multiplied by 3 288 plus 18 x equals to 666 The two eighty eight plus fifty four, three forty two, and three forty two minus six six six. That is equals to three twenty four. So eighteen x is equals to three two four. The next is equals to three two four divided by eighteen. So the answer would be eighteen. Right. So the value of x is eighteen. ji so this next question is again from summer 22 paper 22 and this is question number 8 part d and this is related to limiting and excess reagent right so limiting reagents you all know this thing that the reagent which uh, ends first in a chemical reaction that is called the limiting reagent theek hai ji so the reagent which which ends first in a chemical reaction uh, limiting reagent is the uh, reagent or reactant which ends first and this will decide the amount of product form 
the amount of product depends on limiting reactant and the reactant which remains is called excess reagent so a sample of zero uh, a sample of 2.34 grams of zinc is reacted with 50 centimeter cube of 2 moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid so they have given us the mass of zinc this is mass of zinc and volume and concentration of hydrochloric acid so we have two reactants zinc is reacting with hydrochloric acid and they have given us the values for both zinc and hydrochloric acid right so we have zero uh, we have 2.34 grams uh, 2.34 grams zinc and 50 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid now the question says that show by calculation that the hydrochloric acid is in excess in this reaction which means that hydrochloric acid will remain at the end of the reaction and zinc will consume first. So to find out or to prove that hydrochloric acid is an excess, first we have to calculate the moles of both the reagents. Just make sure this thing in your mind that whenever you are calculating or whenever you are doing the uh, question related to limiting or excess reagent, the first thing is that you have to calculate the moles of both the reactants. So the first part would be Calculate, calculate the moles of both reactants, right? So we have 2.34 grams of zinc. So moles of zinc can be calculated from the uh, uh, relation between moles and mass. So moles of zinc would be equal to we have mass of zinc so mass of zinc divided by its relative atomic mass or molar mass so the mass of zinc is 2.34 divided by its molar mass is 65 2.34 divided by 65 so that would be 2.34 divided by 65 0.036 so we have 0.036 moles of zinc. Next thing we have to calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid for which we have volume and concentration. So from volume and concentration, we can calculate the moles of hydrochloric acid uh, by this relation. N is equals to C into V, concentration into volume. So the concentration is 2 moles per dm cube multiplied by volume 50 centimeter cube. So we have to convert it into dm cube divided by 1000. So 2 into 50 divided by 1000. So the answer would be 50 divided by 1000. That is 0 0.05 multiplied by 2. So the final answer is 0 0.1. Right. So the final answer is 0 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid. So now we have moles of both the reactants. Right. The moles of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.036. Uh, sorry moles of zinc and moles of hydrochloric acid is 0 0.1 now we have to uh, prove that hydrochloric acid is in excess right so to prove that hydrochloric acid is in excess what we have to do we have to look at the equation and we have to find out the molar ratios that in what mole in what ratio these two substances are reacting with each other so equation tells us that one mole of zinc react with two moles of hydrochloric acid one mole of zinc needed two moles of hydrochloric acid all right so to completely utilize one mole of zinc we need two moles of hydrochloric acid that means whatever the moles of zinc we have if we want to completely utilize that moles of zinc we must have double the amount of hydrochloric acid right so the molar ratios of from equation from equation moles of zinc and moles of hydrochloric acid the molar ratio between zinc and hydrochloric acid is one mole of zinc reacts with two moles of hydrochloric acid so if we have uh, the moles of zinc and hcl in this ratio in one to two that means uh, they both would be end at the same time and if we look at the uh, moles we have 0 0.036 moles of zinc and we have 0.1 moles of hcl 
So if we have 0.036 moles of zinc, then according to this ratio, HCl must be double of this amount, right? And that would be, that would be if we have 0.036 moles of zinc, then according to ratio, uh, how many moles of HCl we would be needing? That would be double of this amount according to this ratio. So that would be equals to 0 0.036. 0 0.036 multiply by multiply by 2 that would be equal to 0 0.072 0 0.072 that means that according to this ratio in which they are reacting with each other if we have 0 0.036 moles of zinc then we must have 0 0.072 moles of hydrochloric acid 0 0.036 moles of zinc needs 0 0.072 moles of hydrochloric acid for complete reaction now we have to see that whether we have uh, whether the moles of hcl that we have is it greater than 0.072 or is it less than 0.072 so the moles of hcl that we have calculated is 0.1 which is greater than which is greater than 0.072 so that means hcl would remain at the end of the reaction because 0 0.036 moles of zinc will only react with 0 0.072 moles of hydrochloric acid and rest of the HCl would remain, right? So 0 0.036 moles of zinc need 0 0.072 moles of hydrochloric acid for complete reaction. Therefore, HCl is in excess because we have 0 0.1 moles of hydrochloric acid right so zinc only needed 0 0.036 moles of zinc only needs 0 0.072 moles of hcl and we have 0.1 moles of hcl which means it is in excess so this is how we would prove that hydrochloric acid is in excess in this reaction so now this next question is from summer 21 paper 22 and this is question number 2e part 3. Calculate the mass of oxygen in 11.5 dm cube sample at room temperature and pressure. Give your answer to two significant figures. This is almost like the same question we have done previously. Uh, mass of oxygen, we have to find out the mass of oxygen and they have given us the volume of oxygen at RTP. So that means first we have to convert this volume of oxygen into moles for which we would use the uh, relation between moles of gas and volume of gas which is uh, moles of oxygen would be equal to volume of oxygen divided by molar volume which is the uh, volume of one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure in dm cube it is 24 decimeter cube right this is molar volume molar volume and we can define molar volume as the volume of one mole of any gas at room temperature and pressure so the volume of gas given is 11.5 dm cube divided by 24 so 11.5 divided by 24 this is equals to 0 0.479 0 0.479 Two. and then we have to convert this is the, the, the this is moles of oxygen and now we have to convert moles of oxygen into mass of oxygen for which we will use the uh, formula moles of gas is equals to mass upon molar mass mr so moles of gas we have calculated 0 0.4792 mass we have to find out an mr of oxygen again i would say that oxygen they are talking about oxygen that means o2 right oxygen is a diatomic element so whenever they say oxygen in the question or oxygen gas or oxygen molecule you just simply write the formula o2 until unless it is mentioned in the question that oxygen atom you'll write the formula o2 if they're saying oxygen atom that means they are talking about oxygen o 
right but if they're saying oxygen gas or oxygen or oxygen molecules that means they are referring to o2 oxygen exists in diatomic form so the molar uh, molar mass of oxygen would be 16 into 2 that is 32 so 32 multiplied by 0 0.4792 So the final answer is 15.33 and we have only give the we have to give the answer in two significant figures so that would be equal to 15 grams all right so now this next question is again from the same paper and this is question number seven uh, sulfamic acid is a white crystalline solid this is the molecular formula for sulfamic acid it reacts with aqueous sodium nitrite to make nitrogen gas as shown in the equation right so uh, sulfamic acid is reacting with sodium nitrite and this gives nitrogen gas water and sodium hydrogen sulfate an excess of sulfamic acid sulfamic acid is in excess reacts with 20 centimeter cube sample of 0 0.150 mole per dm cube sodium nitrite so sulfamic acid is in excess and the volume of sodium nitrite this is the volume of sodium nitrite right this is the volume of sodium nitrite and this is the concentration of sodium nitrite so excess sulfamic acid is reacting with 0 0.150 mole per dm cube sodium nitrite whose volume they have taken is 20 centimeter cube calculate the maximum volume in dm cube of nitrogen form so we have to calculate the volume of nitrogen gas right calculate the maximum volume in dm cube of nitrogen form measured at rtp so to find out the volume of nitrogen gas first we have to calculate the moles of limiting reagent because sulfamic acid is an excess that means mole uh, volume of nitrogen it depends on the uh, sodium nitrite NaNO2 in this question NaNO2 is the limiting reagent so we'll calculate the moles of uh, sodium nitrite for that they have given us volume and concentration so if we have volume and concentration of solution we can easily calculate the moles of that solution or moles of sodium nitrite would be equal to concentration of sodium nitrite multiply by volume of sodium nitrite right so the concentration is 0 0.150 0 0.150 into volume is 20 centimeter cube so this would be converted into dm cube 20 divided by 1000 so 20 divided by 1000 multiply by 0 0.150 so the answer is 3 into 10 raised to power minus so these are moles of sodium nitrite 3 into 10 power minus 3 moles of NaNO2 so now we have moles of sodium nitrite next thing we have to find out the volume of nitrogen gas for which for which we use the molar ratios because we have moles of sodium nitrite and we need to find out the volume of nitrogen gas but first we'll convert the moles of sodium nitrite into moles of nitrate uh, into moles of nitrogen right and for that we need the uh, molar ratio between sodium nitrite and nitrogen so from equation you can see that one mole of sodium nitrite gives one mole of nitrogen so the molar ratio between sodium nitrite and nitrogen is one ratio one one mole of sodium nitrite gives one mole of nitrogen that means 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of sodium nitrite would give 3 into 10 power minus 3 moles of nitrogen. So now we have moles of nitrogen. Finally, we can calculate the volume of nitrogen gas by using the relation moles of nitrogen is equals to volume divided by 24 dm cube. The formula which we use for the uh, gases if we want to convert their volume into moles or moles into volume so the moles of nitrogen gas is 3 into 10 raised to power minus 3 volume divided by 24 24 would be multiplied by 3 so the final answer would be 0 0.072 0 
0.072 dn cubes so this is the volume of nitrogen gas which would form when 20 cm cube of 0 0.150 mole per dm cube sodium nitrite reacts with excess sulfamic acid the next question is again from the same paper and this is question number nine part d question number nine part d and this question is related to percentage yield right so it says that in an experiment and let's just read the question from the beginning because this will give us an idea about the structure they're talking about so the structure of ethyl propenoate is shown now ethyl propenoate is an ester and this is the structure of ethyl propenoate and ethyl propenoate is prepared by the reversible reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol so this is the structure of the carboxylic acid and this is the structure of the alcohol from which ethyl propenoate is formed now if you look at these structures the carboxylic acid is one two three three carbon atoms with a double bond so the name of this carboxylic acid is propenoic acid and the name of alcohol is we have two carbons in the alcohol so the name of alcohol is ethanol so when ethanol combines with propenoic acid esterification occurs from the alcohol hydrogen would be lost and from the acid OH would be lost so we get water molecule H2O and oxygen of alcohol will connect to the to carbon number one of this acid right and we get ethyl propenoic acid so this is the structure of ethyl propenoic acid now the question says uh, this part part d in an experiment 10.8 grams of the carboxylic acid they're talking about propenoic acid so in an experiment 10.8 grams of carboxylic acid is reacted with an excess of alcohol so which means alcohol is an excess and carboxylic acid is the limiting reactant so we'll do the calculations from the amount of uh, carboxylic acid the experimental yield of ethyl propenoate is 9.45 grams so experimental yield this is the actual yield or we can say actual output right so this is the uh, amount of substance or amount of product that we get uh, that we actually get when a chemical reaction is performed okay so this is the actual amount actual amount of substance or product that we get right because when we perform an actual experiment there must be some sort of losses so we count uh, those losses as well when we calculate the actual yield right so they're saying the actual yield is 9.45 gram this is not 100 percent output uh, the calc the output that we find out by calculations that is 100 percent output okay ji jisko aap theoretical yield kahenge now this is actual yield this is not 100 percent not 100 percent so the relative formula mass of the carboxylic acid is 72 so this is the relative formula mass of propenoic acid to show that the maximum possible yield of ethyl propenoate is 15 grams so the maximum possible yield is 100 percent output okay ji jo aap calculations se nikalenge that is maximum possible yield which is 100 percent so we have to prove that the maximum possible yield or the theoretical yield we can also call it theoretical yield or theoretical output is 15 grams so there are two types of uh, output one is theoretical which is 100 percent jo ki aap calculation se uh, solve karke nikalte and the other one is actual yield actual yield is which we actually get when a real experiment is performed theek hai usme losses bhi count ho rahe hote so that is actual yield now in this question we have they have given us the actual yield that actual yield is 9.45 grams and we have to prove that the theoretical yield or the 100% output is 15 grams. Now for that, we will do the same calculations. Right? This is simple stoichiometric calculation that we have the amount of reactant, amount of limiting reactant present, which is 10.8 grams. First, we will calculate the moles of carboxylic acid. Right. So the moles of carboxylic acid 
for which we have mass so from mass we can easily calculate the moles by dividing it with the uh, molar mass which is uh, which is relative formula mass is 72 so mole is equals to given mass upon formula mass so given mass is 10.8 divided by 72 so 10.8 divided by 72 this is 0 0.15 moles all right so this is moles of carboxylic acid now if we look at the equation here it tells us that uh, the molar ratio between carboxylic acid and ester is one to one one mole of carboxylic acid gives one mole of ester so that means if we have 0 0.15 moles of acid which means we have, uh, so that means if we have 0 0.1 moles of acid, we will get 0 0.15, we'll maximum get 0 0.15 moles of uh, ester, right? Uh, because we have to calculate the maximum possible yield. So the maximum amount of ester that we can get is 0 0.15 mole from 0 0.15 moles of acid because the molar ratio between acid and ester is, 1 to 1 so that means the moles of ester that we can get maximum moles of ester that we can get is 0 0.15 moles and finally we'll convert it into uh, the mass of ester for which we'll again use this relation moles of ester is equal to mass upon mr so moles are 0 0.15 mass we have to find out and mr you'll calculate the MR of this ester which would be 100 the MR of this ester is 100 right you can calculate it by using the molecular formula 1 2 3 4 5 5 carbons uh, 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 hydrogens and 2 oxygen so this is the MR so 100 multiplied by 0 0.15 the answer would be 15 so the maximum possible yield which we can get is 15 grams of ester from 9.45 grams of acid so the final answer is 15 grams now the next part in the next part they say that calculate the percentage yield percentage yield of ethyl propionate in this experiment so this is very simple percentage yield the formula for percentage yield is actual yield which they have already given us in the question divided by theoretical yield We've calculated it in the previous part, multiply by 100. So the actual yield was 9.45 grams, 9.45 grams divided by theoretical yield was 100, uh, 15 grams, multiply by 100. So 9.45 divided by 15, multiply by 100. So the percentage yield is 63% so we are getting 63% of the product so this next question is from winter 21 paper 22 question number 9 part c and this is again related to limiting an excess reagent it says that dilute sulfuric acid reacts with sodium hydroxide the h2so4 is reacting with NaOH a student adds 0 0.76 grams of solid sodium hydroxide. So they have given us mass of sodium hydroxide to 45 cm cube of 0.2 mole per dm cube sulfuric acid. So they have given us the volume of, uh, they have given us the volume of acid, volume of acid and concentration of acid and NaOH jo hai, ye iska mass given hai. Okay, they have given us the mass of sodium hydroxide show by calculation that the sodium hydroxide is in excess so we have two reagents sulfuric acid and NaOH for sulfuric acid they have given us the concentration and volume and for NaOH they have given us mass and we have to prove that uh, sodium hydroxide is in excess now you know this thing ke limiting or excess reagent ka question aana hai so first of all we calculate the moles of both the reagents so moles of hydrochloric acid because we have sorry moles of sulfuric acid moles of sulfuric acid now because we have volume and concentration so we'll use the formula concentration into volume 
कंसेंट्रेशन इज जीरो पॉइंट टू जीरो मल्टीप्लाई बाई वॉल्यूम फोर्टी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई थाउजेंड डी एम क्यूब में कन्वर्ट करेंगे सो फोर्टी फाइव डिवाइडेड बाई थाउजेंड मल्टीप्लाई बाय पॉइंट टू जीरो दिस इज इक्वल्स टू नाइन इंटू टेन रेज टू पावर माइनस थ्री नाइन इंटू टेन रेज टू पावर माइनस थ्री मोल्स ऑफ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड नेक्स्ट मोल्स ऑफ सोडियम हाइड्रोक्साइड एंड बिकॉज वी हैव मास प्रेजेंट सो वील यूज द फॉर्मूला मोल्स ऑफ एन एच इज इक्वल टू मास अपॉन मोलर मास सो मास ऑफ एन एच इज जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स एंड द एम आर ऑफ सोडियम हाइड्रोक्साइड इज सोडियम ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑक्सीजन सिक्सटीन प्लस वन सो दिस वुड बी इक्वल टू फोर्टी जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाई फोर्टी सो जीरो पॉइंट सेवन सिक्स डिवाइडेड बाय फोर्टी दैट इज इक्वल्स टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन नाइन सो द मोल्स ऑफ एन एच इज जीरो पॉइंट जीरो वन नाइन नाउ वी हैव मोल्स ऑफ बोथ द रिएक्टेंस एंड वी हैव टू कैप प्रूव दैट एन एच इज एन एक्सेस राइट सो फॉर दैट वील लुक एट द मोलर रेशोज इन द इक्वेशन एंड फ्रॉम इक्वेशन वी कैन सी दैट वन मोल ऑफ सल्फ्यूरिक एसिड इज रिएक्टिंग विद Two moles of sodium hydroxide. So moles of H two SO four, moles of sodium hydroxide. Their molar ratio is one ratio two. They are reacting in one to two ratio. So one mole of H two SO four will react with two moles of NaOH. That means whatever the moles of sulfuric acid we have, NaOH must be double of that. So the moles of sulfuric acid that we have is nine into ten raised to power minus three. So from this molar ratio uh 9 into 10 raised to power minus 3 so according to this molar ratio moles of naoh if we come if we want to completely utilize 9 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of sulfuric acid isko completely utilize karne ke liye how many moles of naoh would be needing double of that so aapne just simple isko multiply kar dena 2 se so 9 into 10 raised to power minus 3 multiply by 2 That would be equal to zero point zero one eight. That is equal to zero point zero one eight moles of NaOH. So we can say that nine into ten raised to power minus three moles of sodium moles of sulfuric acid requires zero point zero one eight moles of NaOH and the moles of NaOH that we have is 0.019 which is greater than 0.018 theek hai ji i hope ye baat clear ho rahi hogi ki 9 into 10 raised to power minus 3 moles of sulfuric acid needed 0.018 moles of NaOH for complete uh, reaction theek hai so uh, and we have 0.019 so that means uh, we left with the sodium hydroxide naoh aakhir mein bach jayega and we have we have 0.019 moles of naoh which means it is in excess acha ji so next question is again from the same paper and this is question number 10 part c related to percentage by mass तो एन ऑक्साइड ऑफ फॉस्फोरस हैज द फॉर्मूला पी फोर ओ टेन कैलकुलेट द परसेंटेज बाय मास ऑफ फॉस्फोरस इन दिस कंपाउंड सो परसेंटेज बाय मास परसेंटेज बाय मास ऑफ फॉस्फोरस दैट वुड बी इक्वल टू ए आर एटॉमिक मास ऑफ फॉस्फोरस मल्टीप्लाई बाय नंबर ऑफ एटम्स number of atoms in that compound divided by relative formula mass of the compound multiply by 100 ar of phosphorus is 31 right so this is 31 multiply by number of atoms of phosphorus in p4o10 is 4 multiply by 4 divided by mr so the mr of phosphorus would be uh, 31 multiply by 4 plus oxygen 16 multiply by 10 So thirty one multiply by four multiply by hundred. So thirty one multiply by four is the MR is two eighty four, and thirty one multiply by four is one twenty four multiply by hundred. 
सो वन ट्वेंटी फोर डिवाइडेड बाय टू एटी फोर मल्टीप्लाई बाय हंड्रेड दिस इज इक्वल्स टू फोर्टी थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स फोर्टी थ्री पॉइंट सिक्स सिक्स परसेंट सो दिस इज दर्सेंटेज बाय मास ऑफ फॉस्फरस इन पी फोर ओ टेन सो नाउ दिस नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम समर नाइनटीन पेपर ट्वेंटी वन क्वेश्चन नंबर थ्री पार्ट डी मोलिपडेनम स्टील इज मेड बाई रिड्यूसिंग अ मिक्सचर ऑफ ना इस क्वेश्चन को समझने की जरूरत है ठीक है ये थोड़ा सा कॉम्प्लिकेटेड क्वेश्चन है मोलिपडेनम स्टील इज मेड बाई रिड्यूसिंग अ मिक्सचर ऑफ मोलिपडेनम ऑक्साइड एंड एफ ई टू और थ्री विद एलूमिनम राइट सो दे आर मेकिंग मोलिपडेनम स्टील मोलिपडेनम स्टील मीन्स स्टील विच कंटेन मोलिपडेनम स्टील इज एन एलॉय ऑफ आयरन राइट so it is made by reducing a mixture of molybdenum oxide and fe2o3 with aluminum and they have given us the equation for both the uh, process so first molybdenum oxide reacts with aluminum and we get molybdenum then uh, fe2o3 reacts with aluminum and we get iron aur fir in dono ka jo mixture hai this would form molybdenum steel so molybdenum steel contain molybdenum which comes from these two reactions For molybdenum steel, molybdenum comes from reaction number one, and for molybdenum steel, iron comes from reaction number two. So molybdenum steel contains twenty percent by mass of molybdenum. So let's suppose if this is molybdenum steel, uh, so it is mainly made up of iron and twenty percent molybdenum. Right. So molybdenum steel contains twenty percent molybdenum. Calculate the Calculate the mass of molybdenum oxide. Mass of molybdenum oxide needed to make one thousand grams of molybdenum steel. So we want to make one thousand grams of this steel. One thousand grams of this steel. This is molybdenum steel, and we want to make one thousand grams of this steel. And they're asking the, uh, to calculate the mass of molybdenum oxide. Needed to make one thousand grams of this steel, right? Calculate the mass of molybdenum oxide needed to make one thousand grams of this steel. Give your answer to three significant figures, and the relative atomic mass of molybdenum is ninety six. Now, this is the mass of molybdenum steel, right? And they have told us that molybdenum steel contains twenty percent by mass of molybdenum. and to make molybdenum steel we need molybdenum which comes from reaction number 1 right so to make molybdenum steel the molybdenum which we need is come uh, it is coming from reaction 1 and we want to make 1000 grams of molybdenum steel so in 1000 grams of molybdenum steel how many grams of molybdenum would be present first let us calculate the mass of molybdenum needed to make 1000 grams of molybdenum steel and they have told us that uh, molybdenum steel contain 20% by mass of molybdenum so we just have to calculate 20% of 1000 right so we have to calculate 20% of 1000 which would be Thousand multiply by twenty divided by hundred, or multiply by zero point two, so that would be equal to two hundred grams. So this tells us that to make two thousand, uh, to make one thousand gram of steel, we need two hundred grams of molybdenum. So we need two hundred grams of molybdenum from this equation number one, right? Because the molybdenum which we need to make steel, this comes from reaction number one. and we want to make 200 grams of molybdenum now from here this is simple stoichiometric calculation you have 200 gram you want to make 200 grams of molybdenum and you want to calculate what mass of molybdenum oxide would we need so first we'll we'll convert mass of molybdenum into moles of molybdenum mass of molybdenum into moles so moles of molybdenum would be equal to mass upon atomic mass so we have 200 grams divided by its atomic mass is 96 so 200 divided by 96 which is equals to 2.083 2.083 this is mass of molybdenum sorry moles of molybdenum and from equation you can see that one mole of molybdenum 
is being produced from one mole of molybdenum oxide. So that means uh, molybdenum oxide and molybdenum, they are in one to one ratio. So if we want to make 2.083 moles of molybdenum, that means we need 2.083 moles of molybdenum oxide, right? Because they are in one to one ratio. So to make 2.083 moles of molybdenum, we need 2.083 moles of molybdenum oxide. And finally, we have to convert it into mass. Uh, so we'll just simply uh, multiply the moles of molybdenum oxide with its molar mass, which would be which would be 96 plus 16 multiplied by 3. So 16 multiplied by 3 plus 96. This is 144. So 2. 2.083 multiplied by 144. So the final answer would be 300 grams. All right. So this is the mass of molybdenum oxide that we need to make 1000 grams of molybdenum steel.